There are a couple of impacts that we're at the moment already uh, seeing. Um, one on the investment market in Russia is that cross-border investors, in particular uh, U.S. investors, have become um, very sensitive on the situation uh, between Ukraine and Russia. Based on that, we are anticipating that uh, cross-border capital flows in Russia may come down. Uh, but we also know that most of the Russian uh, investment market is driven by local capital. Strong Russian players that continue to invest in real estate, commercial real estate, in, uh, in particularly Moscow and St. Petersburg. So based on that, we don't feel it's going to be a dramatic impact on the Russian investment market. Um, on the uh, Russian uh, occupier side of the market, we are starting to see the first impl uh, implications, particularly in the industrial segment, also in the, the retail segment to an extent. And that is again driven by the fact, particularly uh, on the industrial side, that cross-border um, so corporate uh, occupiers are starting to postpone or cancel deals uh, that may have been on the way. On the retail side, um, the FX changes that we've seen happening over the last couple of months are uh, unfavorable of the situation there, and that is, implica uh, is having implications on the retail uh, market. Apart from that, we don't really see a lot of uh, other implications yet. Um, in Ukraine, uh, the investment market has uh, not really existed over the last uh, a couple of years, I would say. So as a consequence, we don't really feel uh, a strong impact there. But slowly but surely, we're also starting to see some, uh, some effects on exit yields there. And rents are getting under pressure as a consequence of, uh, of, of local currency losing, uh, uh, losing traction. Um, in Central and Eastern Europe, beyond, let's say, Ukraine and Russia, we don't really feel an impact uh, yet beyond, let's say, some political sensitive issues. Uh, for example, in Poland, the sentiment towards the crisis is, is, is very negative, but we don't uh, see an impact on economic growth, uh, financing availability or capital inflows uh, by investors. The rest in, of uh, the same uh, in the rest of, uh, of Central and Eastern Europe. So on that front, we don't really feel um, strong impacts. At the moment, we're still counting with a baseline scenario that uh, the situation between Ukraine and Russia will be uh, solved in a way um, towards the end of Q, uh, Q3. Uh, an important date there is uh, the parla uh, parliamentary elections on the 25th of May. Um, and this is uh, where we need to stick to. In case things get out of hand, of course, it is very likely that there will be a lot of um, turbulence on the financial markets uh, with potential implications on e economic growth. And this may pose a serious risk to not only Central and Eastern Europe, but generally the recovery of, uh, of, of Europe on the economic side, as most of the European Union countries have a trade deficit with, uh, with Russia, and some of them quite serious, driven by uh, oil and gas mainly.